an underwater volcano off the BC coast is primed to erupt soon. It's called Axial Seamount and it has researchers up and down the Pacific Northwest paying pretty close attention. John Cassidy is an earthquake seismologist with the Geological Survey of Canada and Natural Resources Canada and he is based in Victoria and he joins us now. Good afternoon, John. Afternoon, Amy. So tell us more about this volcano. What have researchers been noticing or maybe quell some of our fears when we hear there's an active volcano so close by? Right. It, it's a friendly volcano. So it's okay. um, it's been, it's nearly 500 kilometers off the coast of Vancouver Island. So it's well offshore and it's uh, it's a deep volcano. So it's about uh, nearly one and a half kilometers beneath the sea surface. So it's way down there and it's far away, uh, but it's being closely monitored with seismometers and a variety of instruments to, to look for uh, movement of lava. And it's, um, it's a volcano that erupts relatively frequently. So there, there have been three eruptions in just over, uh, in about 30 years. Oh, so okay. every decade or so there's an eruption. It's very active. A lot of tiny earthquakes, um, so it's a, it, because of the new instruments on the seafloor, it's a really good opportunity to learn more about these volcanoes on the seafloor that extend all along our coast mm. and to learn more about the processes and, and apply that to the much bigger volcanoes on land right. through the region. And do we have any idea when it might erupt again? Well, the, the thought from um, the researchers at Oregon State University is that it's getting close to the point where they would expect an eruption, and they're thinking this year, sometime in 2025. Uh, it's not certain, okay. and they, it's um, you know based on what they've seen in the past over over the past decade or two. Um, so it's it's really one you know it's it's. It's an experiment <laughs> yeah. using these new instruments to um, that, that are detecting more than 100 earthquakes, tiny earthquakes each and every day. So uh, to see if it's if it's uh, how well they can forecast the eruptions at these offshore volcanoes. And I'll admit this wasn't something that I was previously really aware was was happening in our region. But why are researchers playing, paying um, such close attention to this volcano in particular? Yeah, it's it's because it's the most active um, of these undersea volcanoes, and where they are, where they're located, about 500 kilometers offshore, is where uh, lava's coming, magma's coming up from deep in the earth and forming new ocean floor. So it's what we call a spreading center, and on one side, the the new ocean ocean plate that's being formed, the Juan de Fuca plate, is moving towards southern British Columbia, Washington, Oregon moving at about the same speed that your fingernails grow. So a few centimeters each year, three or four or five centimeters. Mm. The other side of the of the ridge is creating a uh, new seafloor on the Pacific plate, which then moves towards Japan. So it's, it's a very active part of the Pacific ring of fire. So that ocean plate is moving towards us. It causes large earthquakes um, that happen hundreds of years apart on the boundary between the North American plate and, and, the, and the Juan de Fuca plate, uh, and also causes the squeezing of this tectonic plate that we live on here in Southern British Columbia. So it triggers other types of, of earthquakes as mm. well. So it's, it's a very dynamic zone. It's where an ocean plate is being created just to the east of us, uh, where the volcanoes Mount Baker and Garibaldi, uh, Mount Shasta and Mount St. Helens, that's where the ocean plate is sinking uh, beneath beneath North America and, and is basically disappearing. So it's an area where it's a very active region where we see the creation of an ocean plate and the destruction of an ocean plate, mm. not not too far apart. So it's um, this offshore volcano very active. It's it's now one of the best instrumented in the world, and so the opportunity, which is really a new opportunity to look at the uh, the cycle of, of a volcano and, and what do you see before the eruption, during the eruption, after the eruption. 
and and be able to apply that to volcanoes that are closer to us mm-hmm. uh, on land. Well, and that that's what I was going to ask, sort of how we translate what we're learning from this um, underwater volcano and then apply it to, to the ones that, you know, maybe aren't as close to us, but certainly um, around the world could have the potential for more damage um, you know, to a population nearby, what is it that we can learn from them to sort of work more in a preventative way? Exactly. Um, So by monitoring this offshore volcano, it's looking at the the signals, you know, where are the earthquakes? What what are the earthquakes telling us in terms of movement of the magma, the instruments that measure the seafloor and the tilt of the seafloor? Um, How, what does that tell us about when, you know, when can we expect uh, an eruption? So it's really um, one of the first times that we've been able to do this. And so what's learned in this offshore region can apply. It, it, the, the undersea volcano is very similar to the volcanoes that we see in Hawaii and the volcanoes in Iceland and also volcanoes here in British Columbia in the northwest part of, of the province and the central part of British Columbia. Mm. So what we're learning from this offshore um, swarm that's really well well monitored and recorded can be applied to areas like northwest British Columbia, where we see the same type of volcanoes. In fact, Canada's most recent uh, volcanic eruption was in northwest British Columbia about 150 years ago. So um, lots to learn, mm-hmm. lots that we can apply to these onshore uh, volcanoes that don't erupt nearly as often as, as the ones on the seafloor. Um, but because of proximity to people and communities and infrastructure, you know, we're more concerned about the onshore volcanoes, of course. And and just in case anybody wasn't listening right off the top, I just want to establish uh, for somebody perhaps just joining in, this particular undersea volcano, uh, it, it doesn't pose any risk to us. Um, it, it is completely underground and far enough away that it won't impact us any time it erupts. That is completely correct. Um, it's far enough away. It's uh, deep enough beneath the ocean, small enough, uh, and the type of eruption from from this type is it's like an, an oozy lava that just flows. It, it's not an explosive type right. eruption, and so it's it's really a very uh, friendly volcano. We wouldn't expect any impacts from from this. Uh, and, and that's been the case in all previous eruptions at this volcano, and including the three in the past 20, uh, 30 years. So it's um, a really good opportunity to learn mm-hmm. about volcanoes in general and the volcanic cycle. And, um, and in particular, this type of volcano that we, that we see in various parts of the world. John, I just find this fascinating, and I really thank you uh, for joining us. I n- have never heard the term friendly volcano, but I think that might be my, my favorite new thing. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, you're most welcome. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the opportunity. It's nice, right. nice speaking with you. You as well. Take care. John Cassidy is an earthquake seismologist with the Geological Survey of Canada and Natural Resources Canada, and he is based in Victoria.